Hello and welcome back once again to the massive YouTube iceberg. Today we'll be finishing up tier 8. Before we begin, I'd like to announce that I've started a Patreon, not much on there right now, just $3 a month and your name will be shown at the start of the video, with possibly other things later on. With that out of the way, let's get right back into it. I'm the King of Rock and Roll is a video uploaded in 2008 by a user called Fred Spencer. It features a performance by a fictional band called Smell Fishy and the Bigfoot Band. Yeah, move over, gorillas. The band consists of these two blue or gray or whatever they are creatures singing and playing the guitar, and that's really all there is to it. Oh, and it sounds like this. I don't even know what this genre of content would even be called, but it's something we've seen several times in the iceberg before, what with Casina and Kathleen Daniel and Uncle Tom. However, they're all pretty good examples of outsider art and all have a pretty similar vibe to them. I'd also like to point out that I was the 100,000th viewer of the video. I'd uh, like my iPad, please. Thank you very much. Digging a bit further into this channel, we can find a lot of other videos, such as who Needs a Movie, which is an advertisement for their video production company, which offers commissions for professionally made commercials and things like that. What about costume parties? Or family reunions? Or sporting there events? What about prom night or a special evening out? What about animation? Very, very professionally made. There's also, of course, uh, I Could Sure Use a Hug Right Now, which I'll just let you see for yourself. I could sure use a hug right now. That feels better. And perhaps their most controversial video, Ogopogo video taken at Antlers Beach. This video has nearly twice as many dislikes as likes, and I have no idea why. I guess people just really don't like fake cryptid videos, as opposed to, you know, real cryptid videos. All in all, Fred Spencer, along with his wife Sharon Spencer, makes some pretty charming videos, even if the production value isn't all there. They uploaded consistently, however they randomly stopped uploading in 2019. Yeah, just like a lot of those other channels I mentioned, all the comments on the channel's final video are about how Fred Spencer passed away in the same year. Again, it makes a lot of sense, as they were both pretty old. I don't really know where they got the information from, but I assume a lot of these people are, like, friends of his. He truly will be missed. The Human Pet is an ARG and gets a pass for being one of the first on YouTube and also being pretty interactive. The series starts with a man named Eric Taylor tied up in an empty room with a mattress and is supposedly there against his will. Held there by Sam Deercott, an anagram for Codemaster. From there, the audience would be allowed to interact with the series through the comment section, helping pick which food he would eat and stuff like that. Despite the fact that the human pet was clearly a work of fiction, even advertising as much very outward it still managed to get suspended at YouTube staff's hands for violating the terms of service. Yeah, I guess they thought it looked a little too real, even though as early into the lifespans as the series was, it was still preceded by Lonely Girl 15. The Human Pet stands as an interesting tidbit in YouTube history, and at one point they even seemed to have reinstated the channel. Northey's Big Spider Bite is another video that no longer exists, as it was taken down for violating YouTube's terms of service. I assume it probably existed on the site when this iceberg was made, considering there's no deleted tag, but nowadays the only way you can watch it is this screen recording someone uploaded as a video response for some reason. And by screen recording, I mean they literally took a camera and filmed themselves laughing at the video. Uh, the video itself is pretty much exactly what you'd expect it to be. Someone who I assume to be named Northy with a huge, disgusting spider bite. Yeah, I don't think the lost media community is going to be clamoring to find this one.
John Raffman is an animator who is possibly most well-known for his series-slash-movie Dream Journal, which was constructed over the course of three years and documents his wildest dreams over that time period. It's super surreal and weird, and something that particularly stood out to me is that it has a score done by 10trix Point Never, also known as Daniel LePayton, who is most well known for being the creator of Vaporwave. No two John Raffman projects are quite alike though, so I would really recommend checking all this stuff out for yourself. This entry refers to a channel with an invisible profile picture. Yeah, it makes sense, huh? Anyways, th this no longer works, but for a while, if you went to this channel and looked at the profile picture, there wouldn't be a picture there. Like, you change from light mode and dark mode and there's still nothing there. Even if you try saving the image, the save as image prompt doesn't even come up. So it's not like it's a transparent image. How'd they do this? There's no real agreed upon way this happened, but if you try accessing the image, you get a 500 error, meaning YouTube could find the image, but can't show it for some reason. So they probably had some code that conflicted with the way YouTube shows images, and as a result, it doesn't display. However, nowadays it displays normally. Uh, gnome channels. So this one, in contrast to the last one, is pretty vague. Before I get to what this entry is actually referring to, I'd like to share some of the videos I found while trying to search for what this entry is. I found, um, Happy Gnome Dance, a video from over 10 years ago. Uh, Gnome Alert. How do you do? I'm a Special Agent Feldish Daylily of Gnomeland Security. Now I'm here to ask you, as public-minded citizens, to be on the lookout for this gnome. Gnome Man Anal? And Dolly Gnome is Thick, a channel dedicated to this one bad as fuck gnome from Gnomeo and Juliet. However, None of those are what this entry is actually referring to, and instead, according to Pot of Plant, gnome channels are in the same vein as toilet channels from a few parts back, basically channels which focus mainly on showcasing garden gnomes and the uploader's collection of gnomes. Now, weird thing is though, I couldn't find a single example of this anywhere on YouTube, and I definitely tried. I searched through sort by newest, I searched r slash deep into YouTube, I tried everything available to me, but I simply couldn't find anything. Which is really weird. Like, this isn't exactly the craziest entry, right? Obviously, it's kinda weird, but I fully believe there's at least, like, one Garden Gnome Enthusiast channel out there. But for some reason, I can't find a single channel that matches that description. Even Potted Plant himself tried helping me search for one, and neither of us could find anything, as if all Gnome channels had been purged off the face of not only YouTube, but also all Reddit threads too. So yeah, unless someone in the comments has any information about this one, I guess this entry will just have to be more about the great YouTube gnome channel purge, where YouTube and Reddit staff both collaborated to have all gnome-related channels wiped off the face of the planet. Or maybe they just went back into hiding, privating or enlisting all their videos and crawling back underground, like, you know, gnomes. I don't know. Handmade Fool Black Ops 2 Multiplayer Livestream is a livestream uploaded by Steven Janusko. For those of you who don't know, YouTube introduced its live streaming all the way back in 2011, gradually rolling it out to its users. Interestingly, several pieces of software around this time included the ability to live stream directly to YouTube. One of these pieces of software is Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Yeah, the game released in November 2012 and had an in-game live stream feature, which resulted in some of the earliest live streams on YouTube ever. One such live stream is what we're talking about, this handmade fool thing. But there's one problem with this stream. It's still waiting for the uploader to start it. Yeah, it's been over a decade by now and we're still waiting for this guy to start his damn stream. Maybe it's because Black Ops 2's rudimentary live streaming feature was bugged or something. Maybe he just forgot. We don't really have enough information, but still, I just can't wait until he starts the stream. It's... It's gonna happen, right bros? 
Uh, Banjo Rejected from Smash Bros. 4 is a short animation that I think Pot of Plant just found funny. It was uploaded in 2016 by Raphael Krabs and features a disheveled looking Banjo from Banjo Kazooie sitting atop of a big Microsoft tower and lamenting the fact that he was never invited to Super Smash Bros. before jumping off the edge at the end. Not much to say about this one, but it is kind of funny how poorly this one has aged since, you know, Banjo is in Smash now. And he's mid as fuck. Bitcoin comment scams are exactly what they sound like. Scam comments that try to swindle people into buying or investing into shady organizations that promise them all the Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies they could possibly want. While you might raise your eyebrow at these being all the way down here in tier 8, it's important to remember that the chart was posted in 2021. I assume they were less common back then, maybe? Well, actually, NFTs were a thing back then, so who knows. Around the late 2010s, people began receiving strange advertisements before YouTube videos that explained that if every single person in the world went vegan, the Earth would be saved from its inevitable total collapse. These advertisements would originate from a woman known as Supreme Master Xing Hai, the Vietnamese-born spiritual leader of the transnational Guan Yin Famen cyber sect of Buddhism. However, more people would probably call it a cult, and call her a cult leader. These advertisements would be one of the many things that popularized the cult and allowed it to spread its wings, but apparently it's been around since the mid-1980s. Since then, Xing Hai, along with her followers, has proclaimed herself to be somewhat of a god, or demigod-like figure, as is the case with all successful cult leaders. While Quasi-Luminous, the leader of Blood Over Intent, which we talked about in the last part, proclaimed himself to be the human men manifestation of Satan, Xing Hai proclaims herself to be the next in line of Buddha, Jesus, Mohammed, you know, all the great religious figures and masters, despite the fact that she doesn't consider the movement to be a religion, but rather a method of meditation and spirituality that blends ideas from pretty much every major religion. Buddhism, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Hinduism, Sikhism, you know, it's, it's all there. Unlike Quasi-Luminous though, her cult is far larger and she's profit off of it much more successfully. She's a multi-millionaire businesswoman who opened a chain of vegan restaurants called Loving Hut across the United States, which is the main way that she gained a following here in the Western world. Not only that, but she had her own television station, Supreme Master Television, which is how she spread her influence from before the advent of the internet. Not only that, but lectures by her are spread all across YouTube by several accounts, with some lectures dating all the way back to the 1990s. And all the comments seem to be very on board with it, most likely people indicted into the cult. Even the rare videos criticizing Shanghai will have some really angry comments. Estimates say that Shanghai and her Quan Yin method have over 2 million followers worldwide, and a lot of that is thanks to the internet. There's also certain strange beliefs that this movement holds, such as breatharianism, which is a belief that essentially says you can survive off the life force of the universe and you don't need to, like, eat food, which is a mentality that has led people to die of dehydration and starvation. Now, that was a general overview, but some of that might be wrong. There's a lot of conflicting stories about this group, with misinformation being spread both by the group itself and its detractors, so we can't really know much for certain, despite how large the group seems to be. And I guess that's just kind of how it is in these later tiers. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best. <laughs> Scariest picture on the internet is a classic, classic YouTube scary video slash urban legend slash creepypasta. It was uploaded in 2010 by... However, the video is simply a re-upload of the 2006 video Sony scary clip by Sony. The video starts by showing you this painting of a girl just kind of looking at you, and then the video follows up with some backstory. The story is this. In Japan, shortly before a teenage girl took her own life, she drew this picture and posted it online. The freaky bit is this. They say it is hard for a person to stare into the girl's eyes for longer than five minutes. There are reports that some people have taken their own lives after doing so. People say the picture changes. Can you tell? Stare at her for the next five minutes. And then the video, no shit, shows you this image of a girl for five whole minutes, and you're meant to stare at it that whole entire time. And then, once those five minutes are up, they don't even have the courtesy to put a screamer at the end. Just 
did you see it? And then the video ends. Like, come on, that's, a, that's the perfect opportunity. I almost feel cheated that you didn't put a streamer at the end. However, interestingly, people have gone on record saying that the girl's facial expression does change slightly the longer you watch the video. Which isn't true. I think that's just placebo, but still, it's an interesting illusion nonetheless. So, where does this image even come from? Well, it was drawn by Robert Chang, an artist and screenplay writer. On his website, etherreality.info, he explained a bit more backstory to the image. The woman's name is Princess Rue, and she's a character from a sci-fi slash fantasy screenplay he's been writing called Tellurian Sky. He dubbed the painting Melancholic Princess as it's her last portrait done of her before she inherited the King's throne or something, and he debunked the myth as simply that, a myth, which he called ridiculous and hilarious, and that the people who believed it are pretty gullible. Now, digging a bit deeper into Ether Reality, we can find that he wrote a blog post about the legend and how he's been getting emails for years about it. The blog post is interestingly two weeks older than the first YouTube video of it. So the rumor didn't originate from YouTube. He links to a Google site, which is most likely also not the origin of the rumor as the first screenshot was in 2006. Chang believes the rumor originated in China, as that's where the emails first began receiving about it came from. However, the whole thing is pretty much an unsolvable mystery. Imagine posting your artwork online and then being informed after that that you didn't make the artwork and it was actually some Japanese girl that died. Ah well, at least there are some versions online with the screamer at the end. That's what the original was missing. The Magic Sex Gun advertisement is a really weird ad that began popping up first on porn sites and then just straight up on YouTube. Basically, it describes the concept of a magic sex gun that if you point it at someone and shoot, they'll instantly want to have sex with you. The magic sex gun supposedly works extra well on younger women, which is, you know, weird, but it gets weirder. The ad says that if you point your magic sex gun at your innocent looking younger female coworker, you, She'll be under the desk, sucking your dick in no time flat. Point it at the cute young French woman bagging your groceries, and then she'll let you rail her behind the dumpster. It then tells you to go to magicsexgun.com to pick up your magic sex gun. Yeah, that's 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 pretty fucking creepy, isn't it? Now, the, the site is no longer up. It just redirects to some other pick up chicks kind of scam. However, through discussion online, I can find out what the magic sex gun is actually referring to. Obviously, it isn't actually a gun, though you would be forgiven for thinking that. What I thought it was going to be is something really fucked up, like date rape pills or something. Like, I don't know, the tone of the advertising just really kind of seemed like there is going to be some fucked up weird shit going on. But apparently the magic sex gun refers to yawning. Yeah, if you, if you yawn more, then it turns women on and they'll be more likely to want to have sex with you. Yawning. Is, is that, is that... All it takes, just, just don't get enough sleep. I don't really know what's even the point of the scam past that. Like, how, how are they making money from that? You already gave away the secret. What are you going to do? Offer yawning classes? This shit's ridiculous. Flesh Monster Truck Nuts refers to a seven second video advertising those ball sacks people will hang on the back of their trucks. I never really understood why people do this. I mean, everyone I've ever talked to thinks it's fucking weird, but yet I've still seen them, like in real life, multiple times on the highway. Is is driving a big ass truck not masculine enough? You need to put balls on it so people know, because they might think it's a, a girl truck. But of course, if it was a girl truck, you'd, you'd put a pussy on it, so I don't know. This entry refers to a comment posted on a video called How to Add Videos Marked Made for Kids to a Playlist that simply reads, Oh hell yeah, that works. Thanks, bro. This comment was posted by... Uh... It's a comment posted by a user with no profile picture and no username. If you try going to their channel, you literally can't. There's no link on the profile picture. It's not really known why this happens. Some people thought that this is simply a channel that got deleted at one point, but usually when your channel gets deleted, so do all the comments you left, so you wouldn't be able to see the comment anymore. However, apparently when you delete a channel, YouTube actually takes 30 days to fully wipe everything, so that's most likely what happened. The comment isn't up anymore, so that time frame probably checks out. 
Black Herbal Toothpaste Advertisement Thai is an advertisement for Black Herbal Toothpaste from Thailand. Pretty self-explanatory. This ad is... I don't want to say racist exactly, but it's definitely, uh racial of some kind. It starts with this child getting their balloon stuck on this big pole, and then this gentleman of African descent walks and climbs up the pole and gets the balloon down for her. However, before he can give it back to her, her mom comes by and grabs her, seemingly scared of the man. He then walks home sadly and lies down in his bed, which is a giant toothbrush, and... <laughs> Uh, yeah, awesome. It ends with the words, appearance can be deceiving, and fades to a shot of the black toothpaste on a toothbrush. So is this racist? I don't know, it, it, it just kind of caught me off guard, I guess. You have 20 seconds to stop this cursed video was uploaded in 2007 by Repent Sinners. This is another great example of what scary videos used to be like in the early days of YouTube when they weren't something truly memorable like username 666 or blank room soup. The premise is that if you watch the video, it'll give you nightmares and you have a 20 second head start to click off of it. Once those 20 seconds are up, some weird video starts rolling of this guy walking around and finding stuff like Freemason and satanic symbols with no music playing. It's clearly meant to freak you out. And then finally, this video once again doesn't end with a jump scare, so another ripoff, but it says, now the door is open. Pay attention, a friend who died young will visit tonight in your dreams. Please don't talk with him slash her and don't follow him slash her. But if you send this video to someone, you won't have bad dreams. So yeah, this is another one of those send to five people you will die in your sleep type comments in video form. You can tell this video is really old because it only tells you to send it to one person instead of a comical number like 15 in the later versions that this copypasta would do. When I was like 10 and I first saw one of those, I started freaking out and crying because I didn't know 15 people I could send it to. Shit's fucked up. WhatsApp status is a phrase people will put into video titles, presumably for the purpose of making it into their WhatsApp status. I never used WhatsApp, but I don't know, that, that makes sense to me. This entry specifically mentions hot WhatsApp status videos, which, judging from the search results, are like softcore porn, or at least stock footage of people having sex. What the correlation is to WhatsApp could probably be answered by someone more familiar with the platform, like setting your status to porn doesn't seem like a very good idea, but hey, what do I know? These videos usually find their origins in India, from what I can tell, but there are also a lot of K-pop fan games with these titles. It's certainly strange. Bart the General is a series of animated Simpsons parodies, and I use the term parody very loosely. This series, to put it lightly, doesn't feel like it was made by a real human, and it's a parody of The Simpsons in the same way that Tamers 12345 and Tails Gets Trolled are parodies of Sonic the Hedgehog. It started in 2005 by a group called Famicon, and it starts with this weird YouTube poop kinda intro. I'm, I'm sure I'm probably gonna get comments that say this isn't actually a YouTube poop, but I'm doing my best here, okay? It then cuts to the main course with really weird pacing, voice acting, and animation. The plot apparently follows Homer Simpson, who lives with his family in Duckburg from DuckTales, when his house suddenly gets broken into by his neighbor, Gerard Toadfish Rebecca, who proceeds to steal his wife and kicks him out of the house, March, you're breaking my heart. March. And from there, all sorts of wacky hijinks ensue that I don't really want to get into because it just kind of needs to be seen to be believed. I know it sounds like I've been shitting on it for being bad, but it's definitely one of those things that's probably intentionally shitty and does it really, really well. So, so well, in fact, that the series is more influential than it might seem. Does this art style look familiar to you? If you've been keeping up with the series, then your answer is most likely yes. Pilot Red Sun, Nicholas Fedorov, uh, Seaboy RD, even though he's not on the iceberg, bonus entry, I promise. They're all heavily inspired by Bart the General, and you can 
really see the similarities with that surreal, hyper-realistic MS Paint look. It's hard to describe, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Go give Bart the General a look. It's been taken down, but countless re-uploads exist. Also, one last thing I'd like to say is that apparently, according to this YouTube comment, this video was found in Osama Bin Laden's hard drive back when that got leaked. Like, he was trying to watch The Simpsons and accidentally grabbed this video instead. I couldn't find a source to back that up, so they could just be bullshitting, but still, I thought it was amusing fun fact, so I decided to include it. For a while, the only person covering these various obscure YouTube glitches that inhabit the lower tiers of this iceberg was a YouTuber called Timeworks, who made short videos about pretty much every glitch that was found in the dark recesses of the platform. However, even his videos have been affected with glitches in the past, mostly due to his own doing. For example, around 2021, he uploaded the widest video to YouTube. It was over 7,000 pixels wide, but only 136 pixels tall. As a result, you would have to scroll to the right to see the entire video, and some other weird stuff happened, like the video being stuck on processing, and impossible to publish, and the comment count saying it only had one comment, when there were clearly several. He tried uploading it three times, and each time YouTube fucked up in a different way. It's worth a watch, so I'll link his video on the topic in the description. I'm kind of surprised I haven't asked this question sooner, but what video on YouTube do you think has the most amount of comments? It's something that you never really think about, but in contrast to the most viewed video or the most liked video, it's kind of weird that the most commented video is something that even most avid YouTube viewers couldn't really tell you. The list on Wikitubi of the most commented videos is kind of weird. There's the shit you'd expect, like certain YouTubers asking people to comment on the video, certain super famous videos that generate a lot of conversation, like Never Gonna Give You Up, Me at the Zoo, and uh, Logan Paul's Apology. Also, a whole bunch of K-pop. Like, most of the top 10 is taken up by either BTS, Blackpink, and also Gangnam Style for a good measure. The number one is apparently uh, Out of the Blue by Rob the Robot, which is like a preschool learning YouTube kids kind of channel. I couldn't actually find anything about this video anywhere besides Wikitubia itself, as the channel exists, but the video doesn't, so I don't know how true this one is, but maybe the video got taken down. Also, if it's a preschool channel, why would comments be enabled in the first place? But, like, whatever. Interestingly enough, number two on this list is this video by Amir Tataloo, who is an Iranian singer-slash-songwriter. This song by him has a mere two million views, which seems like a lot until you consider that there's over 19 million comments, meaning that there are around 9 to 10 comments per view on the video. The way this was accomplished was pretty obvious if you look at the comment section for a bit, as there is a metric fuck ton of spam comments on the video. It's still kind of weird that there are so many, however, it's pretty telling that the most commented YouTube video only became that because of the use of bots. YouTube does not give a fuck about the comment section these days, and it's sort of obvious. It is broken beyond belief. Bad Egg is, as the title might suggest, an animation by Big Animation. Uploaded in 2012, this short follows the story of two chicks that hatch out of their eggs. The first one to hatch gets fed a worm by the mother bird. Then another bird hatches and steals the worm from his brother. After watching this short, this stupid fucking bird became one of my most hated fictional characters of all time. Like this big and greedy fat fuck steals the worm and then asks for the rest of the food, so the mom leaves to get more food. And then she notices there's another egg there, and he realizes they have to share with whatever hatches out of that, so he pushes it off the nest. He then pushes the other bird off the nest, and when the mom comes back, she gets shot. Again, not entirely sure why this is even on the iceberg, but it definitely made me hate that fucking bird. On YouTube, there are a handful of channels created by former residents of North Korea, the most gated off and totalitarian nation on Earth. Actually, I don't need to introduce fucking North Korea, you know what that is. People born in North Korea don't usually escape, but when they do, they go north through the Chinese border and then go to South Korea. An increasingly common thing is for these defectors to start up social media accounts, not only in YouTube, but TikTok and Instagram as well. These accounts will range from a lot of different topics, such as glimpses into North Korean life, like, you know, the food they eat, their daily routines, the way their dialects differ from their southern cousins, and of course the horrifying abuse of power carried out by their government. Sometimes they'll also document the culture shock that comes with moving to 
to a country that allows you to do some things like use the internet and express yourself freely. Channels like this are all over YouTube and they're pretty interesting in all honesty. However, more interesting than this in my opinion is the various channels created to promote North Korea by the country's government. Take this influencer, uh, Yumi. In this video, for example, she is talking about her daily life in the most normal nation on earth. However, as is the case with a lot of North Korean media, it's really eerie. Like, something is just missing. She gloats about the skyscrapers and giant roads, but viewers with a keen eye might notice something a little off about this scene. Uh, there's no fucking cars. Or even people. Yeah, it's kind of necessary for completing their whole city aesthetic they have going on. According to the comments section, the buildings themselves don't have hot water, AC, or even working elevators. Yeah, a skyscraper without elevators. That's a great idea. It's all for show, to promote the illusion that North Korea is a functional country. Who are they trekking? That's a really good question. Certainly not me, and I would hope none of you, and also probably not even their own citizens. Now, of course, if it wasn't made obvious enough, you also have to remember that YouTube is completely banned within the borders of North Korea, alongside the rest of the internet, save for a few government-run internet sites. So the only way that these channels would have access to YouTube is if they were heavily affiliated with the government. For more info on this, there's a short video by Half as Interesting that covers the whole thing pretty well. I would recommend you check it out if you're interested. Link in the description. Better Bandai is a mysterious channel that was created in 2014. On this channel, they would upload these videos of red and blue boxes with random tones playing. Every video would be 30 seconds long, and videos would be uploaded every few seconds, with the channel now standing at around a million videos. Now, you're probably getting a major sense of deja vu with this entry. Better Bandai is the exact same gimmick as Webdriver Torso, which is a channel I talked about back in Tier 4 that does the same thing. Like Webdriver Torso, there are a couple videos on this channel that aren't like the others, like this 3 second video, a couple 5 minute videos, and this short, which was clearly made by a 4 year old boy holding a big swirly lollipop based on this hat that's on their desk. Unlike Webdriver Torso, there wasn't really anyone speculating on what this channel could be, as we kind of learned our lesson the first time. This channel was created by YouTube for the purpose of testing out video player functionality, which is further evidenced by the fact that the propeller hat is actually what they give interns at Google. Like, I can't even make that up, that's just hilarious. But yeah, this channel is basically just Webdriver Torso's little brother or something, and not an art project roughly based on Webdriver Torso, like say, Unfavorable Semicircle or Global Worldwide. This is another entry that's pretty self-explanatory. Some channels on YouTube are subscribed to themselves. There's not much to this YouTube glitch. It's just basically an exploit that worked sometime in the past and no longer works. But you will still have it on your account to this day if you never unsubscribe from yourself. Pretty neat. This video may induce nightmares is a video that probably won't induce nightmares if you're familiar with a lot of the stuff on the iceberg. Uploaded in 2015 by Silver Carnivore, the visuals and audio of this video are just compilations of a bunch of other creepy YouTube videos. There's audio here from Obey the Walrus and Agamemnon Counterpart, and visuals from The Peanut Vendor, Illusion of Bias, and some other videos I definitely recognize but can't put my finger on what the name is for them. Sorry, some of them just kind of blend together in my head. Either way, it's a fun compilation medley type thing of a bunch of the weird side of YouTube. But at this point in the iceberg, there's not much to cover here that hasn't already been covered. Chip the Black Boy is a ventriloquist puppet commonly featured in videos by the outsider artist David Lieb Hart, who I briefly covered earlier in the iceberg. David Lieb Hart, along with his character, got his start on low-budget public access religious TV, which, as I've already said, can get really weird. Specifically, he featured on the Junior Christian Science Bible Lesson program, which aired in the Los Angeles area, similarly to Francine Dancer. Chip was originally just used for speaking about, like, you know, Jesus stuff, and there's this one clip I found from the show where for some reason the editor just keeps cutting back and forth between the puppet and the other guests, and it's just really jarring and funny to me for some reason. Like, they really just had to have gotten the worst editor in the world for this, but for David, it kind of paid off. Presumably, Adult Swim's Tim and Eric saw the clip and must have thought it was the funniest shit ever, as it is pretty similar to their sense of humor if you've watched their stuff. It was for this reason that David Leaphart and Chip the Black Boy would hit the mainstream when he began to be regularly featured on Tim and Eric's awesome show Great Job. At some point, Chip would slowly be taken in a different direction, and soon to be characterized as an occultist, demonic, and ungodly being. 
which is definitely a 180 from the character's original portrayal. He even released a few albums on Bandcamp under the Chip the Black Boy name. Pretty cool stuff. On YouTube, when you upload a video, it'll usually enter a processing state where you won't be able to view it as it needs to render in standard definition, high definition, and then 4K, if applicable. The length of the processing period depends on YouTube servers, as well as how long the video is, and frame rate, bit rate, format, etc, etc. Sometimes, the processing period can be infinite, apparently. Timeworks did a video about this, where he found a bunch of videos, all of which from 2018 for some reason, that when you try to view them, it says, we're processing this video, check back later. Like for example, this video, uh, one of us disabled our brother's phone. The description reads, look at the video, you'll find out who it is. Since you can't view the video, we'll never be able to find out who it was. Tragic. I also know of this video, Kitty, uploaded by jones 4 Carry. This video doesn't say it's processing necessarily, but if you try viewing it, you're met with this. Now, this video has 614 views, most likely meaning it was viewable at one point, but no longer works after some YouTube update over the years, probably. It's a weird phenomenon, for sure. Zam440 from What Again Gather was an ARG started from re-uploads of albums by the music group Tally Hall. Essentially, there's this channel called Comprehension Amalgamation that has the most popular uploads of pretty much every Tally Hall album and Tally Hall related album, like Hawaii Part 2 and stuff. I am by no means a fan of this group, but this channel had some secret codes at the 44 minute mark that led to the channel Zam440, with secret codes and weird cryptic videos and all the classic ARG stuff. For those interested in learning more, I've linked a video that goes a lot more in depth in the description. Jeffrey Luca is a comment bot that would reply to other people's comments, telling them to visit a site called Flickzone. And then this other guy, Josiah Ronan, comes in and is like, yeah, I agree, you should go to this website. These two blowjob brothers were on YouTube and also elsewhere on the internet around 2021. Flickzone, if you're wondering, is a scam site, no shocker there. Not really a whole lot to say about this entry, just a standard scam video, and not as funny as Magic Sex Gun either. Gibbs Ogden is another one of those comment section journal guys. Sometime in 2020, this guy was, I guess, bored because of quarantine, so he set out on a mission to comment on the music video for the song Africa by Toto every day for the next 10 years. He would always reach the top of the comments, so pretty much everyone who watched this video and scrolled down to the comment section knew about him. However, at one point, Gibbs mysteriously stopped posting comments. Yeah, the dude never managed to fulfill his promise, whether that be because he got bored or locked out of his account or even died remains unknown, though the channel is still up. In the comment section, others have continued on his legacy. How to install wire shelving is a video uploaded in... Yeah, for some reason, this home improvement video presented to us by Lowe's just does not display any description, upload date, author, view count, likes or dislikes, comment section, or really anything besides the video itself and the recommended tab. It's really bizarre. Everything below the video is just completely blank for some reason. Through the Wayback Machine, we can find that the video was actually uploaded by a channel called Holiday Solutions. If you try to go to this channel, you're met with a this channel's unavailable message, which is notably different from the standard this channel no longer exists message that pops up when you try to go to a channel that was banned or removed normally. However, going even further back with the Wayback Machine, we can find that the channel at one point did exist and was owned by Target? So why do they have a Lowe's thing at the beginning? What's the truth? Basically, the leading theory on this one is that YouTube themselves removed this channel for whatever reason. Maybe the ad campaign ended or something, but they still didn't want someone to take the URL, so they just took out the channel and sometime down the line of YouTube updates and redesigned. Everything just kind of broke for this singular video. Nowadays, you can't add this video to a playlist, and it remains one of the few videos you can't like, comment, or subscribe on, and your ass is definitely not hitting that bell either. That being said, I still don't understand why the video says Lowe's and the channel says Target. That, that, that one's just like an internet mystery, I guess. Mr. Eggy Road to 1 Million Subs, from what I can gather, is a video scheduled to premiere on October 15th, 2025. I don't know the full story behind this video, but I assume it's one of those videos where people used an exploit to have videos be scheduled like centuries into the future, but it no longer works, so it's only like a year or two now. Sad. SpongeBob is evil is 
peak YouTube. No other way to put it. You kids better be careful because I heard there's an evil SpongeBob running around and I don't want y'all getting hurt. There's no such thing as an evil SpongeBob. One Million Viewer is a creepypasta written about YouTube that can be found on the Creepypasta Wiki. In the story, the protagonist is emailed about a mysterious website called 100000.icu. The email tells them that in order to get 1 million views, they should link their YouTube accounts to the site. The author, being stupid I guess, heads to the website and is greeted with a white eye staring back at them on a black background. It asks who they are, to which the author puts in their first name, because again, they aren't the smartest person ever. Uh, the eye then tells them that they are one of one million, whatever that means. Once the account is linked, the eye tells them that one million will be with them shortly. The author then, of course, goes to YouTube, publishing a short channel intro on their channel that would soon hit a million subscribers. Views started coming in the thousands, and their comment section was filled with weird channels with names that consisted of random numbers and letters, and comments that wouldn't stop talking about how nice their eyes are. They tried thanking them, and then their screen was covered with those same eyes. After that, they kept having weird dreams where the eyes start wrapping around them and choking them, and then the pasta ends on a very vague note about the original emailer apologizing for sacrificing them to the eyes. The creepypasta is pretty indicative of its time period being the early 2010s, which makes it fairly charming. I Plan to Delete My YouTube Channel is another YouTube creepypasta. It centers around a 22-year-old woman named Chloe, who upkeeps a channel with parodies of popular TV shows. However, something weird happens that disrupts her channel. She uploads an innocuous video thanking her viewers for getting her to 100,000 subscribers. However, for some reason, she gets more dislikes than likes, with her comments asking her what the hell is this bullshit and it's not what they subscribed for. She then realized that the video on her channel wasn't the one she initially uploaded. It was actually a 16 minute long video of her typing on her computer for some reason. When she got back to her computer later in the day, another video was uploaded that showed her hanging out in the room for three hours. Videos would keep being posted to her channel against her will, and she wouldn't know what was causing it until the very end, where it's revealed that someone had been watching Chloe through a window and taking videos of her. Pretty creepy stuff, though I think the craziest part about all of this is that the article ends with the full name and email address of Chloe, which is the name of the actual person who wrote this. Like, I don't know, not to overanalyze a creepypasta from 2015, but the whole theme of it is like an invasion of privacy, and then you just post your full name and email online, and it's still up to this day, nine years later. I, I mean, sure, whatever. Venting Download is yet another YouTube creepypasta and probably my favorite of the bunch. The author in this one describes how they had a favorite gaming series in the early days of YouTube called Remember This Game, hosted by a reviewer called JHF Killtron, who unfortunately deleted his channel. They made a video about a game called Venting, which was a freeware game you could download online that features a lot of disturbing content, leading it to have since been banned. Not sure how a a game released on the internet for free can really be banned, but you know, whatever. The review starts as any game review from this period would, with Kiltron's intro song playing, and then talking about how he found the game and how he was told it was the scariest game of all time. He gets into the review with footage filmed in his camcorder, as any game reviewer in the 2000s did, and it seems to be a first-person shooter. You shoot non-threatening enemies in a yellowish-gray background. The only objective was to shoot people, and for some reason the only sound in the game is bait. Beethoven. 
once the level is finished, the game tells you how many people you killed and gives you a free wallpaper for your computer. The wallpaper would be a photograph of a dead body of a teenage boy that looked pretty similar to the character model that the first level had. The second level would have a different character model, this time being a bald middle-aged man, and the wallpaper would match it. The game continues on, and finally the 12th level ends with the protagonist of the game turning the gun around and shooting himself. The reviewer then tells us that he saved the photos of the dead bodies and sent them to his local police department. They found out that the game was developed by Jonathan Winstone Banks, a serial killer who had recently taken his own life. Kiltron then just kind of wraps up the review by saying it doesn't deserve a rating, wishing the viewer a happy Halloween, and then saying video game wizard signing off. I actually like this one quite a bit more than the last two. It just seems so in character for a game reviewer from the first few years of YouTube to just describe how he found images of dead bodies on his computer in the middle of a game review, and then just sign off the review normally. Especially for a fucking Halloween special, like, like, I don't know, that just works. I also like the whole Hong Kong 97 thing this goes for, which is actually a real game that has dead bodies on it. Also, something interesting I noticed is that uh, the reviewer, JHF Kiltron, is an actual person on the internet. I found a Newgrounds account with the name, which was created in 2007, and this drawing on DeviantArt, which is supposed to be a Flash version of him, created in 2008. His username was also featured in a Q&A video by fellow game reviewer Jedite1 in 2007. For reference, the creepypasta came out in 2012, so all of these examples predate the story by a few years. So there's a chance he might have actually been a game reviewer back in the day, but then again, there's no archive of his channel's videos anywhere on the internet, so it's possible that the author might have just put in his or his friend's old username as a joke. And either way, it's safe to say that venting is not a real game. Or is it? Regretful Reads was a YouTuber whose content consisted of professional narration of fanfiction. Mostly, these fanfictions would be weird or poorly written, shipping together fictional characters like Diego and Sid from Ice Age, or like Lightning McQueen and Thomas the Tank Engine, or uh, Buzz Lightyear makes Woody eat Zerg's butt. Really, uh, putting the regretful in regretful reads, if you don't mind me saying. Apparently, though, he was chased off the internet because some of the fanfictions he read were obviously pretty freaky and risque. And I guess certain people couldn't tell that he wasn't reading things because he liked them, but rather to poke fun at them. And of course, they called him a pedo and zoophile and all other sorts of things. Today, he is no longer on the internet, which kind of sucks. Thieven is a short film uploaded in 2012 by Thilakonathan Studios. Hope I didn't butcher that. The reason why this is on the iceberg is because it's just really weird and poorly thrown together. The film's plot revolves around a hairless boy named Thieven who is destined to bring back what he wants the most. So he ventures through a dark forest that's filled with goblins and dragons. Pretty generic plot, obviously, but the movie stands out in just how weird it looks. Almost every human character is either bald or has the most fucked up hair imaginable, and there's also notably no voice acting whatsoever, with character dialogue having subtitles and the mouths move, but no sound comes out. Thieven is also notable for the videos various YouTubers have made about it, such as the weirdest short film ever made by Critical, and Thieven the Commentary by Duke Loves You, where he attempts to dub over the dialogue and is just blown away by its poor quality. You might love your amazing digital circus, or hell of a boss, or big top burger, but Thieven is truly the pinnacle of indie animation on YouTube. This entry refers to this weird video that began popping up in people's recommendations. Basically, it was two seconds long and appeared as the default YouTube thumbnail that you might have seen from when the thumbnail fucks up for some reason. And the video is simply titled Deleted Video, with the channel name being blank. Huh, that's weird you might think. If it's deleted, why is it getting recommended to me? Curiosity might then get the best of you and you might click on the video. If you did this, you would be met with a jump scare. Particularly the Exorcist one. Yeah, it wasn't actually a deleted video, it was just fucking with you. Though the video did at one point like actually get deleted, so I guess it wasn't technically lying. There isn't even any archive of it anywhere to my knowledge, but you know, it was literally just two seconds of the scary maze game thing, so not really missing out on much there. 
Okay, I've had enough. Performance artist, you guys have gone way too far. W what am I even looking at? <sighs> Alright, um... Funny Butt Man is a video uploaded in 2014. It starts off with this intro saying that it's Butt Busters by Falcon Studios. Now, this is what convinced me to search this term up since, you know, maybe I could find more info about this video, where it's from, you know, just fun facts I could include in an iceberg. But it's actually a completely unrelated gay porn video, so that's awesome. Anyways, the actual video itself features this man dressed in an upside down human costume. The arms are supposed to be the legs, the legs are supposed to be the arms. There's a neck with a fake human face sticking out of his dick. And of course, the face is the asshole. He's writhing on the ground in a desperate attempt to get the costume off, and it really does feel like you're watching a human suffer. The whole time this is happening, Vaporwave is playing for some reason, and that's pretty much the whole video. Another upload I found correctly identifies the video as performance art, with quotations around art. And you can actually hear the audio in this one. It sounds exactly like you'd assume. Now, try as I might, I could not pinpoint an actual origin for this video. Everything I found about it was either re-uploads or reactions or what have you, so yeah, no identifying this man. Maybe that's for the best. Man, really killing it with these entry names, huh? Uh, funniest sexual abuse ad ever is a video uploaded in 2008 by a YouTube user, haha, you can't read. It's a re-upload of a sexual abuse awareness ad from the 90s, particularly one about child molestation. In the ad, a story is set up about an old couple who offers to take care of their neighbor's kids while they're at work, and the husband is really weird, sometimes taking kids inside to get them to take their clothes off so he can take pictures of them. The ad is notoriously poorly acted, though I don't really blame them for not being able to get a very good actor for the pedophile. Is it the funniest sexual abuse ad ever though? I mean, I don't know, I haven't seen many sexual abuse ads, especially not funny ones, so it might well be. Hamburger Lady is a video that is supposedly from the deep web. You know, every time I hear that, my eyes roll so hard that I can see my fucking brain. This video features some classic creepy images distorted and turned to grayscale by what appears to be Windows Movie Maker. The audio is a distorted version of Hamburger Lady by Throbbing Gristle, a noise song that doesn't really need to be distorted any more than it already is. I mean, just listen to it. The song itself is probably the most interesting thing about this video, as it's pretty disturbing to listen to on its own, and if you can make up the lyrics, you can tell it's about a girl who's being burnt to a crisp as the result of a car accident, being cooked like a, you know, hamburger. And apparently, it's not even confirmed if the song is based off a true story or not, so, you know, that's fun. Also, supposedly, this video was actually found on the deep web, but it was probably just put there to fuck with people. You know, just because something is from the deep web doesn't mean it's inherently evil or cursed or illegal or whatever. Jesus. Logan Roof is a YouTube commenter who has been seen on a handful of popular YouTubers' comment sections, and he just kind of causes mischief and says a lot of edgy stuff. For example, a few years back, Jacksepticeye's father passed away, and he made a video discussing the events and how he felt about it and all that. You know, opening up to his audience and showing vulnerability. And this guy Logan Roof ran with it, making several comments saying that he deserved to die, and that he's burning in hell, and whatever other edgy shit he can think of. And it wasn't just Logan either, around this time there were several people doing this shit, but it kind of seemed like Logan Logan was the person spearheading the harassment campaigns, kind of similar to Tommy Parkey with the YouTube troll police. Even worse is that apparently this Logan Roof guy was using some random image of a child as his profile picture. This dude is so hated that he had his own subreddit dedicated to hating him, which seems to no longer exist. Again, just like the UTTP, the best thing to do with these kinds of people is to just ignore them. Because not only are they just trying to get a rise out of you, but they're also probably like 13. 
Real picture from inside the grave the first 15 days is exactly what it sounds like. The video was uploaded in 2015 and is extremely low quality and has several watermarks, but you can still make out what's happening. It's just a time lapse of a dead body's face as it's decomposing. On this video, there's a big ogreish.com watermark, which is an old shock and gore site that was around in the early 2000s, which basically got absorbed by LiveLeak. Now, it's debatable whether or not this is real, since by the end of the video, the face is just basically a skull, which, I mean, I'm not a mortician, so maybe this is just wrong, but I think a body would decompose a little less quick than that, but again, I don't know. Either way, it's a pretty freaky and gross video that I would not recommend searching for yourself. Komodo dragon videos are exactly what they sound like, I guess. Potted Plant has said this entry was a Reddit suggestion and that the person said these videos can oftentimes be very graphic and contain footage of animals being brutally killed. So I'm pretty confident that what this entry is going for is something similar to the reptile channel. People take these animals and like sick them on other smaller, more defenseless animals and film it for views. I did look more into this, but there was only so many videos of animals getting eaten alive by Komodo dragons that I could stomach, especially the ones where they're like still screaming while inside its stomach. And besides, again, this entry is basically just the reptile channel entry, but with the knowledge that there's more channels like that out there. So yeah, that sucks. This entry refers to footage of a police shootout in Lawrence County, Georgia. In 1998, police deputy Kyle Dinkler pulled over a driver named Andrew Howard Brandon for speeding, who happened to be a Vietnam War veteran. They both had firearms and the policeman fired a warning shot as to which Brandon pulled out his rifle and shot at him nine times before killing him on the 10th shot and then fled the scene. The court ruled that he did it out of post-traumatic stress disorder and sentenced him to death by lethal injection. The way this relates to YouTube is that in 2012, footage of the event was uploaded to YouTube. And yeah, it's about as disturbing as you might expect. You can't really see anything, but you can definitely hear the deputy screaming out in pain as he's shot at kind of similar to the Russian brick video. This video is ubiquitously used in police training to tell officers that there could come a time where pulling the trigger is the only way to resolve a conflict. Pretty fucked up stuff, I gotta say. Oh, and also music artist JPEG Mafia sampled the audio of the cop dying for his song, I Just Killed a Cop and Now I'm Horny, resulting in some controversy online. Oh, we're really getting into the fucking gross shit now. You thought we were getting into the gross shit now? You haven't seen anything yet. Pamperchu is a furry YouTuber from Oregon who has obsessions with Pokemon and electronics, and most infamously, identifies as an ABDL. For those who don't know, ABDL stands for Adult Baby Diaper Lover. What that means is that Pamperchu enjoys dressing up like a baby or toddler, uh, drinking from baby bottles, uh, wearing diapers, you know, standard baby uh, activities. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, that's pretty weird, right? Right off the bat. But there's, there's a, there's a whole community of people who like diapers, so you might be thinking that there's no reason why Pamps over here should specifically stand out among the crowd. Well, you would be sorely, sorely mistaken, as even in that community, it would seem like Pamper Chew isn't the most popular guy ever. Y you know, let's let, let's read this forum post. I, I think that'll give us a good idea of what this guy is all about. Uh, th this is your final warning. There's only like two entries left in this video, and they're both Pokemon fans with scat fetishes. You you can you can click off the video if you want. I, I I'm, I'm not I'm not holding it against you. You're not missing much. Anyways, Charles Show starts a thread. I can't buy diaper, so I just go through the trash to find some. What do you think? Is it a good idea? I would love to buy some, but I can't. I just wear them five minute. Pamper Chew comes in and gives his two cents. I do it. And it's safe, as long as you know what you're doing. Wet diapers are very safe and can be reused, but poopy diaper can make you sick, so just be careful. I have saved wet and poopy diapers from dumpsters for over 10 years and I have never been sick. I love the smell of old diapers and love getting them for free out of the garbage. 
you can microwave them really hot and kill off any bacteria and germs. Then let them cool down before wearing them or you will burn yourself. Everyone seems so grossed out from used diapers on this site. If you like dumpster diapers, just go for it. Just be careful. A kind contributor who is trying to at least level with the madman that is Pamper Chew chimes in with some advice. Just going to give you the warning that you can contact diseases through urine and your advice is also very dangerous to the OP. Also, a microwave will not kill off all bacteria and could start a fire. Pamper Chew comes in with the rebuttal. My microwave is awesome. 1971 radar range. I have been doing it for a long time and I have never been sick. Also, I don't see any way to start a fire with a microwave unless you are a complete idiot. If anyone wants to wear a nice... squishy old diaper, let them. So, yeah. To recap, Pamper Chu not only likes wearing diapers, but he also likes stealing used diapers from the dumpster and microwaving them because he thinks that makes them safe to wear. So, this is one of those cases where I don't really feel bad for making fun of him. Those diapers he's getting sexual pleasure out of wearing are probably filled with, like, baby b piss and poop. So, yeah, he's... he's really fucking weird. Uh, there's other things he's known for like being featured on G4's Attack of the Show, even though to my knowledge he wasn't doing anything super weird besides wearing a fursuit. He's also a fan of eating expired food, calling it uh, vintage, and that if it's bottled or canned, that means it can't expire. And by expired food, I mean like from the 70s and 80s. I'm honestly shocked the dude is still breathing. He still pops up from time to time and he still exists on YouTube. Christ. Justin Coolidge, better known by his internet alias Justin RPG, is an internet figure I've known about for far longer than I would have liked. Like, I'm pretty sure I heard about this guy before I even heard about Chris Chan or Sonichu, which I think might say more about me than it does the placement on this iceberg. Uh, anyways, God, where do I even start? Not much is known about Justin's personal life, however, what gained him notoriety is his obsession with Reshiram, the legendary Pokemon from Pokemon Black and White. His main base of operations would be his personal Facebook of all places, where I hope he didn't have any of his family members added, but he probably did. On his Facebook, he would make these bizarre edits of him getting married to Reshiram, with him like, photoshopped into them. It wouldn't stop at Reshiram though, and it wouldn't stop at getting married either. He proclaimed his love for other Pokemon, such as Lugia and Moltres, and other fictional characters, like how he's going to have sex with a female Atronach from Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. He even goes into extreme detail about the encounter, since their body is made up of 87% fire, so she'd have to cast a Flame Resistance spell. Of course, the Flame Resistance spell is an immunity to fire, so he'd still take one point of damage every second he's having sex with her. That being said, he's not gonna rush into having sex with her, as he makes sure to plead. There's also a post where his Moltres is, uh, uh, shitting in the house, and his girlfriend, which is this character from, I assume, uh, you know, RPG, forces him to clean it up by eating it. He even specifies, and I mean all, every last bit. So yeah, he has a ton of fantasies about not only getting eaten, but also eating and, and drinking the shit and piss of Pokemon and other various creatures. I think honestly the funniest part about all these images is the photos he's taken of himself to be inserted into all these situations. Like, I don't know, the way he's just standing there is really funny to me. However, none of this is what he's known for, and the iceberg lists a very specific part of his career. All that stuff I just listed was merely background knowledge for Justin RPG's discography. Yes, my dear viewer, Justin RPG is a critically acclaimed singer-slash-songwriter with four studio albums being Linear Pair of Angles, Linear Pair of Angles 2, Linear Pair of Angles 3, and Substance. Who could forget classic tracks like Stuck in Lugia's Stomach Alone? Well, it ain't right to eat a Pokemon, so I let the Pokemon eat me. Or Don't Stop Loving Reshiram. Fire Dragon. The vast white attractiveness showing 
somewhere on the screen. Or, uh, I hate this Windows Vista tonight, which might be his only fucking song where he doesn't talk about Pokemon. I hate this Windows Vista tonight. Blue screens. And, uh and of course, his most iconic work, I Love Reshiram, Married to Reshiram. I love Reshiram. I love Reshiram. Love each other, 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 love each other. Love each other, love each other, sing with me, Reshiram! Truly a, a, a sublime work of art. I also found this song he made called With Reshiram, a parody of Eminem's Without Me. I want you to listen real close to the lyrics on this one, because this song included something that kind of baffled me. I know you think it's weird of me, but love is love, it doesn't matter who, what, with. So CWC won't let me be or let me love. So let me be, they tried to shut me down at Restaurant Fantasy. So CWC won't let me be or let me love, so let me be. What else could CWC stand for other than Christian West and Chandler? Do Justin RPG and Christian have like, like, like beef? I, I mean, I know they're both married to Pokemon and both make some really shitty song covers about themselves, but what does this line mean? Like, did he have a, a, a ghostwriter? Now, the thing to note with Justin RPG is that, unlike basically every weird person that got encountered by 4chan and other groups like that, like, for example, Chris Chan or, you know, fucking Pamper Chew, Justin didn't feed the trolls, like, at all. He just kind of lived in his Pokemon vor poop eating fantasy world, unbothered by the outside world. So, it's not really fair to even call him a lol cow, since nobody could really get a rise out of him. He kinda just didn't give a fuck. He's deleted his accounts a couple times once it got too annoying, but he's still around to this day posting weird shit on his public Facebook, though he hasn't made any music unfortunately. He's been featured as a bit on Siva Gunner more than a couple times, so I'm kinda surprised he's this far down, but I'm also not surprising considering the, uh, you know, subject matter of his obsessions. Justin RPG will always go down to me as one of the strangest internet figures of all time. However, something tells me that it's only gonna get weirder from here. And that's it for tier 8 of the massive YouTube iceberg. I'm sorry this video took a while to come out. Basically all I can say is that shit happened. But anyways, what a fucking gross way to end it off, huh? Like, the other ones would usually end with some interesting ARG that goes really deep, or some fucked up gore video or something like that, but this one ends with two Pokemon fans with scat fetishes. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, though, I was low-key excited to talk about Justin RPG. Like, that's an internet person I've known about for far too long, and no one ever talks about how weird he is. Which, like, maybe that's for the best, but still. Anyways, Tier 9 is looking crazy. Uh, really coming down the home stretch of this massive, massive YouTube iceberg, and this project has been insane. Really, really fun to work on. Uh, again, shout out to Pot of Plant. None of this could have been possible without him. And go check out his newest music video. It's about icebergs. So, I know you guys will like it, and even samples my voice. So, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time in Tier 9 of the Massive YouTube Iceberg. Peace out.